Today on Discover Whistler, I wanted to show you a home in Pemberton that's just being constructed by my great friend and client, Paul Viserka. Now Paul, full disclosure, is also the manager at Rona in Pemberton. Owner. Oh, manager and owner, <laughs> the whole thing. Uh, so he's got the inside track on some really, really cool new uh, ways of building that are coming out. Some are not so old. Uh, some are newer, but he's going to take us through what he's doing on his home. Now I sold him this lot uh, just last year and I sold his home up the street here in Pemberton. And so we're diving into his new build. Tell us more about it, Paul. Well, we're going to talk about wall assemblies today and how to, how to stop the cold from getting into your house and uh, slow down the, the heat buildup from a hot summer day. They both work hand in hand. So what we're going to do today is talk about the outside of a building and talk about the different methods that we can trap the heat inside and reflect the ultraviolet light outside. Ultraviolet light outside. Okay, cool. Well, let's go on inside and take a peek. Go. Cool. So classic uh, construction you can see on the outside of this house is uh, half-inch plywood, which acts as your air barrier. Old-school construction would be would be half inch plywood and then you put your regular siding on top of that. Now in new construction, we're gonna add an insulation layer of one to two to a maximum of six inches on the outside of a building that stops the cold from ever penetrating the wall. Here's one uh, example of probably several that's on the marketplace. Old school would be uh, extruded polystyrene, the blue uh, styrofoam, SM board, and now you've got what we've got here is two inch outside insulation from a company called Amdic. You can see that it's got this silver uh, layer on it. That's there to reflect the ultraviolet light to keep that heat buildup from building up. But it also, it's on the inside as well. And now we're keeping the heat in to the, uh, into the building. So we're not letting the cold penetrate the whole wall assembly. Well, here we have a, another example of a thermal break between an interior wall that meets a stud wall. And to stop that thermal break, to stop the translation of cold that's touching a stud wood wall to translate through the interior wall, we put a thermal break in. And what we've got here is an advanced product that has both reflective UV protection on the outside and on the inside. So it's going to stop the the heat radiation from the outside, but more importantly, we're gonna keep the warm air inside and it acts as a thermal break between an interior wall and an exterior wall. And you're also gonna see that on the ceiling as you pan up where that TGI hits that interior wall line. I don't want, as the roof touches, I don't want that translation from the wood going down through the wall and into the wall assembly. More importantly, we don't want that warm air escaping up through that stud wall. Back in the, in the 70s, uh, some of the best construction in Ontario and through Canada because of our cold winters was classic two by four walls with really good insulation, completely sealed on the inside with that classic red brick and mortar on the outside. Great windbreak, air barrier, thermal protection on the inside. The rooms were built on small sizes, so you had 10 by 10, 8 by 10, 6 by 10 rooms. So the houses were all broken up inside. In a modern construction, we want to live in a larger space. We want to live in an open concept. Well, as soon as you get to an open concept, we're going to carry big beams. And what those big beams need is engineering to hold them up. Well, you can't hold them up in a smaller 2 by 4 construction. So we go to a 2 by 6 construction, so we get a deeper wall cavity versus a two by four, and you can see that there. So you're gonna get an extra inch and three quarters on that two by six. You go back and you carry a larger beam, and now you've got a two by eight construction, and you can see how much deeper that well is to carry the structural engineering to create these open concepts. Well, on the same thing, I don't necessarily have to fill this whole cavity full of insulation anymore if I understand the principle of thermodynamics of warm air moving to cold air, keep the cold on the outside and increase the outside insulation before it gets into the inside of the house. So we'll still fill the cavity and create a, a, a continuous uh, air barrier, uh, uh, vapor barrier on the inside. But now I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
I can increase the thickness of my outsolation. So to get to that airtight house in 2020, 2025, 2030 to meet the step code, where you're gonna see an increase in outsolation with proper cladding to break the wind, you're gonna see a deeper wall cavity with strong insulation, and then you're gonna see what we call an airfoil system, a foil system that reflects the heat in and that keeps that warm air from escaping. So not just a, a clear poly film anymore, you're gonna see that silver lining, that silver insulation on the inside. And that's your new wall assembly, and then you get these big open rooms. So here we have another example of modern technology meets uh, structural engineering and design. Up above me we have a butterfly roof, and in a snow Canadian climate, cold winter, you'd think a butterfly roof well, where does all the water, where's all the snow going to go? So when we look up and we see this beam and all the water that's going to collect, in the center of this house, you're going to have a hip. And the hip pushes the water to the sides. And now I can have the displacement of the water and I can manage the water off the roof and down the sides of the building to use as irrigation. So I can use it for a second time. But more importantly, in the wintertime, with a white roof, this will have a TPO, mechanically cold fastened roof. It's actually white. It's a membrane, continuous, rolled out, seam sealed, and that white roof holds the snow. And the snow acts as another thermal insulating layer, just like a field mouse digs a hole in the middle of a field underneath the blanket of snow and stays warm, insulates it with his grass and hay, but on top of him is six inches, 12 inches, 24 inches of snow, but he's nice and warm. Well, we're gonna keep that snow factor on top of this roof, not let it melt and act as another insulating layer. And there's more modern technology. So Paul, what about the peaked roofs that we have at homes in Whistler, such as like the A-frames and Alpine Meadows, um, Gothic arches, things that shed the snow, how does that affect how that insulation works uh, versus a house like this? Well, remember, those A-frames were developed because of the big snow loads that were happening in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and so we still get big snowfalls today. To be able to shed that roof because of the thin construction on 2x4, even 2x6 construction, you couldn't carry the weight. And as the snow builds up in a classic uh, Whistler setting, you have to get rid of that snow, and you gotta get rid of it fast. It can't build up, but you'll have collapse. So to carry that, that extra, that, that engineering, that classic A-frame that we see in Whistler, it's got to be able to shed fast. But the other thing that goes on with that A-frame, when you go to heat the inside of that, well, heat it, hot air rises. And so you, you classic see that, that lofted bedroom upstairs. Well, that's where all the warmth is. But down in the kitchen on the main floor, it was yeah. always freezing. The floor yeah. was freezing, yeah. right? So until you heated up the whole cabin, was it getting all toasty warm? That cabin was, you know, pressurized, hot air rises, cold air on the floor, pipes freeze down below. It was a constant nuisance. And so today that technology is rapidly changing. Thanks a lot for showing us around today, Paul. That was awesome. And I was thinking if it wouldn't be too much trouble, if we could come back when you're gonna be doing the windows, because we didn't talk about windows today oh, and you've sure. got some amazing window technology coming in. So. We'll catch up with you. Yeah. Uh, when is it going to be? Um, the, towards the end of August, around the 23rd, 24th, 25th, we'll fly the windows in to see that uh, that technology in the windows. And then I think uh, a little bit later after that, I think people would love to see how new HVAC and heat pumps and uh, gas fireplaces and, and heating units work in new construction. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot. You're Appreciate welcome. it.